Hello, my name is Eugenia Paolicelli. Uh, I'm a professor of Italian studies at Queen's College and the CUNY Graduate Center. Welcome to CUNY TV Presents, a film initiative showcasing the exceptional work of local and international filmmakers. I am excited to introduce Italian Cinema CUNY, a film series I created in the fall of uh, 2017. IC CUNY is an educational project that fosters deeper understanding of Italian cinema from its origins through today. Our mission is to bring the culture and heritage of Italian filmmakers to audiences living in the United States and New York in particular. I am delighted to present an incredible filmmaker, Alina Marazzi. Alina has established herself as a great experimental director in the world of cinema, both in Italy and abroad. Her stories bring the experience of womanhood to life and she explores motherhood, personal narratives, the art of expression and the weight of history. Alina is the genius behind innovative films and documentaries. Uh, she challenges traditional approaches to cinema by working with family archives, diaries and found footage, resulting in stories that feel both intimate and profoundly universal. In 2002, she made the documentary For One More Hour With You, which tells the story of her mother's life, who she sadly lost at young age. A few years later, she followed a group of nuns who made a vow to live apart from the rest of society in her documentary, Forever. Most recently, in 2020, Alina was commissioned by Christine Dior to document the creative process of Lucia Marcucci, an Italian visual artist and invented child poet. Alina is also the director of We Want Roses Too, which documents the stories of women who lived and fought through the feminist movement and sexual revolution of the 1970s. She's also the mind behind All About You, a feature film about motherhood, and Anna Piaggi, fashion visionary, about the life of the iconic fashion journalist. Welcome, Alina. Welcome to New York, and welcome to the CUNY Graduate Center. We Thank are delighted you. to, to uh, have you here Thank with you us. for having me here, and wanted to showcase my work, and yes, present we, it to your audience. So. Yes. Can we talk about how you started? Uh, because you went to, to, to film school in London, and I think you studied also one of the most uh, prominent uh, feminist uh, scholars, mm -hmm. uh, Laura Malvi. And how you elaborated, how you started this idea of uh, becoming uh, a filmmaker? Mm. Becoming a filmmaker, well, <laughs> Uh, yes, I went to film school uh, just after high school. I knew I wanted uh, to make, f well, I was interested in making films. I w was interested in the medium of film. Uh, I wasn't sure in, you know, which role, which capacity, but, you know, I found that out later on. So, yes, I went to film school and I lived in London in the mid 80s and I uh, graduated from, uh, from a film school there and one of my teachers was Laura Malby, uh, who is uh, an important feminist filmmaker. She wrote a, a very important essay and, uh, in the 70s and for the first time she created this definition of the male mm. gaze mm -hmm. uh, in cinema. Mm -hmm. But at the time when I was um, you know, a young film student, I hadn't realized how important her teachings were and it's something that perhaps you know, grew in me as then I left film school and started uh, working outside of the school and you know, learning. Uh, learning the job. So after school, I went back to my hometown, Milano, and started working as, you know, in, in documentary filmmaking as assistant director and, you know, commission work and so on. So it was not until the early years 2000 that I started making my own films. Mm -hmm. In the presentation, you already mentioned the 2002 mm -hmm. film For One More mm -hmm. Hour With You, which is um, a very personal project. It's a one hour film made uh, with um, family home movies of my family. 
and it's a portrait, I would say, of my lost mother. So through the, these home movies and also uh, photographs from the family albums and more specifically her letters and her writings from her private journals, I reconstructed her figure uh, through these testimonies. So it's a very intimate uh, process of uh, uh, claiming back the figure of the mother, if you like. And this mm -hmm. is a project that I worked on in my own time, you know, off work. It wasn't a commission <laughs> project, obviously. Uh, but then it became a film, you know, despite mm -hmm. <laughs> my intentions in a way. It became a film, a film that then was shown in many different places, in festivals, and has somehow um, also created a landmark, I would say, at least in Italy for, for cinema, because it was one of the first films that uh, used um, private footage in describing exactly. a story that, of course, is a very personal story, but at the same time has a personal, has a universal message. And I think you could also elaborate on this because it's true that the film is a landmark of something that is, was going to happen uh, later in, uh, in the cinema and documentary uh, filmmakers. <laughs> The use of uh, found footage, yes. uh, family movies, uh, personal, and the ability uh, from your side uh, to create a, really a new language. Uh, you succeeded in, uh, in this kind of research that involved your own uh, personal history. <coughs> uh, at the same time, you were able to translate that uh, into a um, new kind of montage, mm -hmm. uh, different media uh, used. Yes, I've always been mm. uh, attracted by mm, images from the past, so photographs, mm. archives, uh, home movies, and uh, as especially family home movies are mm. uh, very often uh, involuntary testimonies of history. Um, they they tell the you know the small story. They are focusing on the detail rather than on a bigger picture, and there is something very interesting and very um, emotional about this type of images. And it's something that I worked on when I was uh, editing the film mm -hmm. for one more hour with you. And I was using only my, you know, the footage that my grandfather shot, who was an amateur filmmaker. And of course, I had a, a very, I, I, I had a very strong motivation in making that film because I wanted to gain back my mother through cinema in mm -hmm. a way. Because mm -hmm. I only, I only had those images and her words from her mm -hmm. writings, you know, in order to spend an hour with her, mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. as the title of the film mm. uh, recites. And so um, by working on this specific kind of images, I realized how much uh, this type of archival footage tells about people's lives and how much it um, goes straight to the heart of the viewer, because in a way, uh, we can all relate to this kind of um, emotions, this kind of imagery, this kind of uh, spontaneous um, cinematic experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as we find in mm -hmm. home movies. Mm -hmm. And so this is, th that was really my, f the first time that I was working with archive and by working uh, so thoroughly on, on that film and in a quite a long period of time, because this is a project that I would, you know, carrying on, you know, in my own spare time, aside from, you know, professional work, I realized how interesting it was to, you know, to, to inquire and delve into mm -hmm. representations of people and specifically mm -hmm. representation mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. women. That's why this is so important uh, in your method uh, uh, of filmmaking, because it's uh, also interrogating a kind of history that doesn't tell really the stories of uh, people, individual people, ordinary people, or what is hidden. Uh, and so I think in this kind of uh, process, uh, what is also started to happen, feminist uh, uh, thinking as well, uh, philosophy or history or historiography to interrogate and to really find uh, new ways of uh, understanding what was hidden. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think that's what uh, um, one of the 
um, important uh, um, innovation in, uh, in your filmmaking is that uh, through the camera, through this method uh, of uh, putting together these different sources uh, and material to sort of uh, uh, establish a new life Mm -hmm. with the person you are portraying, this case mm -hmm. is, a, is the mother, uh, in other cases uh, women uh, who uh, were part of the feminist movement. So it's uh, the ability of, uh, and the possibility, let's say, the true uh, storytelling in, f in filmmaking, uh, in the assemblage, because mm -hmm. you also work on collage, I think that's another kind of method. Yes, in, in the 2007 film, We Want Roses Too, I uh, had this idea uh, of um, going through the decade, the very important de decade of the 1970s in Italy through uh, archives. So I wanted to tell the story of what happened in people's lives, and especially in, women, in women's lives in those very important years of changes, of uh, political challenges and fights, only through the, uh, the testimonies found in the archives. So it's a documentary, it's a feature-length documentary that doesn't use, for instance, interviews with people who were protagonists of you know, those mm, demonstrations or those fights. But I wanted to address uh, directly the document, the archive, meaning the film footage, the sound recordings, uh, the photos, and once again, private journals. Mm -hmm. So I was interested in telling the story of that very important political time from starting from the personal uh, experiences of women. So telling the story from a subjective perspective, which is uh, which was an important choice in terms of narrative uh, for the film, but it, it was <coughs> started because it, it is connected directly with the experience of what women were doing at the time, recognizing for the first time that their personal subjective experiences uh, were in fact shared by other people and so they were not individual or private anymore, they became collective and um, political. Mm -hmm. So the choice of the film to use uh, a first-person narration through, for instance, the voiceover reading uh, the, the, the first-person accounts mm -hmm. from the journals is also, you know, a, let's say a political choice which goes back to that kind of attitude and approach from the 70s. So it's history from a subjective perspective and, and his history that is mm -hmm. made up by um, a collective chorus of voices mm -hmm. that all together resonate in the mm -hmm. same way and tell the bigger picture. So through montage, through editing, mm -hmm. through juxtaposing different uh, representations of mm -hmm. women's lives. So the more institutional representation coming from uh, the archives of Italian TV to the more experimental um, imagery that uh, independent and underground filmmakers were producing at the time and also mm -hmm. what uh, the first um, women filmmakers were creating at the time. So mm -hmm. I'm using in that film, in We Want Roses too, I'm using a lot of footage from the f first uh, uh, Italian women filmmakers who were making their own experimental mm -hmm. films with Super 8, with videotape, and so mm -hmm. there is that kind of research as well. Also, I think these, uh, going back to this idea of the journals, no, there is, uh, in this case, uh, in Italy, there is a center in uh, Tuscany, you know, the Pieve di Santo Stefano, there is a, you, you went there in order to select um, three different uh, journals uh, uh, and three different voices, uh, women uh, from different also geographical areas uh, in Italy. Do you think also that uh, there was a drastic change uh, in terms of uh, uh, women's awareness uh, uh, and also conflict uh, uh, in, in Italian society being, you know, Catholic? Uh, country because you, you discuss, you know, issues of, uh, that are very much uh, uh, at stake uh, today also. 
the role of being, you know, a mother, being a wife, uh, working, uh, um, sexuality, abortion, all these kind of things that came to the fore more in uh, those years. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? <laughs> or some feminist scholars have talked about cameraless cinema mm. for some women, and I know you were uh, involved in a dialogue with other mm -hmm. uh, about this, uh, mm -hmm. so what does it mean? <laughs> it's true that um, this film, since we're talking about this film, that is a film that is using other films. Mm -hmm. So it's a film made by questioning the, the gaze, mm -hmm. <laughs> the original gaze of the original footage, right. by deconstructing that narrative, that representation, recontextualizing it in a new form and a new structure, so somehow giving life to a new grammar or a new uh, syntax of the language, mm -hmm. of, of, of the cinematic phrase. Mm -hmm. So this is the process. And by questioning and breaking up the narration and juxtaposing different uh, types of footage, the, most, uh, the more institutional to the more experimental or animation with Super 8, uh, family home movies, the idea was to explode somehow the conventional representation of uh, women in the past and create a more kaleidoscopic perspective, mm -hmm. you know, which would show the multifaceted uh, nature of women and of people in, in general. Mm -hmm. uh, so to go beyond the fixed representation of one type of woman or the other type of woman. And what was interesting for me in when I was reading the private uh, journals of the women, which I found in this very interesting archive in, in Tuscany, which collects uh, people's personal writing and, and letters. Uh, so these are unpublished uh, works, um, texts. What was interesting that in the writings, the questions that were the women were, uh, were writing on paper were, expressing uh, the contradictory um, nature of, you know, of their feelings, of their emotions, or even of their uh, ideological beliefs. So, as we know, we are not just one piece, we are not just uh, always very rigorous in, you know, the way mm -hmm. we act, the way we feel, the way we, mm -hmm. uh, we are. And so, for me, what was important was to show all these different uh, layers, layers and, and conflicting uh, feelings and emotions mm -hmm. and the questions that uh, women were asking themselves and then finally that were sharing with other women and therefore finding that their um, stances were shared by other people and other women as well. Continue, uh, Lina, with the uh, work on the archive because you participated in a very uh, important project uh, uh, with this uh, short uh, film called Borders. Uh, um, can you talk a little bit uh, about the project and what you, you, you did, your contribution, because that is also a very fascinating uh, yes. film and use different, uh, different use of the archive. So mm -hmm. I would like you to talk yeah. about that. So this, uh, the 10 minute film called mm -hmm. Borders, uh, which was made in 2014, is uh, one episode of a, of a collective film which was produced by Istituto Luce in Rome, so the, the, main, uh, the main old uh, archive, mm -hmm. um, state archive, uh, that commissioned to um, nine different filmmakers, Italian contemporary filmmakers, to produce a 10 minutes piece uh, mm -hmm. uh, drawing, drawing from the archive. So the, the idea was to you know, work freely in creating terms with the archive uh, and do whatever you know we wanted to do so I um, I worked around the notion of uh, of borders or of, of boundaries uh, and I found this very interesting footage from 1914 Mm -hmm. um, shot during the uh, First World War up in the mountains uh, in the Italian Alps, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, for a start you see a very long row of soldiers crossing this huge field of snow. Mm -hmm. And so that already is like a line through the frame that looks like a border. 
these images are very fascinating. I, these are Italian soldiers that are um, walking uphill in very difficult conditions to, in order to set up a fence, to set up a border against what it seems to be an invisible enemy. enemy. Of course, the enemy was uh, the Austro-Hungarian Empire at the time, but uh, the images depict this lost man up in the mountains against somehow the sky. So I, I associated um, this imagery with the verses of an Italian contemporary poet, Mariangela Gualtieri, mm -hmm. who doesn't write about wars, who doesn't write about Italian history, but she writes about um, also, amongst other things, another kind of um, vibration I would call it, uh, that has to do with the limit between the material world and the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. So I made this total free association between her uh, text, her mm -hmm. poetry, and this imagery. Then I went to her uh, and I, show her, uh, I showed her the imagery mm -hmm. and I said, you know, I made this association, what do you think? Uh, it's not easy to associate imagery to poetry because poetry already evokes images. Mm -hmm. So it was a bit, you know, it was a challenge again, mm -hmm. but you know, we tried and she lent me, she authorized me to use her poetry and it is uh, her voice reading uh, the poem uh, along mm -hmm. the film. So the result is it's this combination of mm -hmm. old footage mm -hmm and her New, contemporary. Yeah. It's beautiful, I mean, the way I've never seen mm -hmm. such a thing, you know, to this association of, uh, you know, usually you have music or a mm -hmm. voiceover, uh, but that is really gives, uh, through her uh, poetry, you have a sense uh, of the suffering, uh, also of the mm -hmm. challenges, uh, or this, uh, um, in fact, the film also finished with the dance. Uh, yes. Uh, there is an in interesting sequence. Uh, so th there was part of the same footage or you? No, uh, different footage, different but it was all footage from First World War. And yeah. it's Women. basically it, the, the narration goes from questioning mm -hmm. the act of man yes. of, you know, destroying nature and ending and up with the vow with the wish of reconstructing mm -hmm. community and so there are images of a feast uh, of, of people dancing again, and, uh, and, uh, and nourishing a child mm -hmm. this is the very That's last beautiful. image of yeah, the film it's a beautiful film uh, in fact continuing on this idea of poetry because i think there is a lot of this lyrical moment uh, in your film which is you know the way you use also the archive the memory um, uh, Maria Grazia Curie, the creative director of uh, Christian Dior, uh, commissioned you uh, a film uh, to cut this to think that uh, I also found a lot of uh, uh, inspirational in terms of, you know, again, women, uh, poetry, art, creativity. Can you talk about that? Yes, this was an interesting <coughs> project which was made in a very short time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, unlike other projects which always take quite a bit of time mm -hmm. in terms of producing the film. But I was, uh, yes, I was given this great opportunity to work uh, responding to the, the commission of Maria Grazia Curie who wanted to celebrate the Italian uh, pop artist and uh, visual poet uh, Lucia Marcucci who uh, is uh, a less known figure in the pop ar Italian pop mm -hmm. art scene, but she started creating her work, her artwork uh, in the 60s and has been very, very prolific. But because of various reasons, she's not very well known. Maria Grazia mm -hmm. Curie wanted to present her work uh, um, in occasion of one of the presentations of the fashion collection in 2020. Mm -hmm. And so uh, knowing my work, uh, I didn't know if she knew my work, but anyway, I, I received this phone call uh, saying, you know, I'm thinking about you. Can, you know, would you like to um, mm -hmm. create a portrait uh, of Lucia Marcucci? an artist that I didn't know at the mm -hmm. time. So I discovered this artist and again, this is a short piece, it's a nine minute piece, um, basically presenting, introducing the work uh, of Lucia Marcucci, who also 
um, has always used collage as a technique. Collage with different medium, mm -hmm. different devices, mm -hmm. different, you know, paper collage, mm -hmm. video collage, photo collage, and so on. So there was a, an interesting connection between the way I work with film, the collage, the montage, and the, the, the technique uh, and the work of art of Lucia Marcucci. So I went to the art gallery in Florence where they all of her work is and discovered her visual universe and created some uh, mise-en-scene also mm -hmm. with, the, with the figure that I mm -hmm. invented mm -hmm. that is leading us through the universe of Lucia Marcucci. Thank you. Thank you, Alina, for this uh, engaging conversation. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, um, and give us a glimpse inside your creative process. It's been uh, really uh, important uh, for us to, to have you. So you okay, talking thanks. about <laughs> your work. Thank you for having me. Stay tuned. Uh, films are up next. Follow us on social media and we'll see you next time on CUNY TV Presents Italian Cinema. Thank you for watching.